Do you love Chip and Company podcast? Be sure to head over to chipandco.com for even more Disney Parks news, entertainment, and review podcast. Chip and Company has been delivering the best in Disney news, planning tips, and more since 2009. And now you can get that news in an audio-only format, now five days a week. Every Monday, join Mark and Greg for Diz Life Podcast and start your week off the right way by living your best Disney life. Tuesday is our news and review podcast discussing the latest breaking news from the Walt Disney Corporation. Every Wednesday, we're discussing the best of Disney parks with Chip and Greg. Thursdays have Mark and Greg breaking down the top headlines of the week in And Company, a weekly news roundup. And don't forget to tune into Extra every single weekend where we give you a deep dive on the biggest topic of the week. Get that extra dose of Disney in your weekly commute, your time on the treadmill, or even just relaxing around the house. So what are you waiting for? Head over to chipandco.com today and become part of the fastest growing podcast network in the Disney community. We hope that you enjoy today's podcast and thank you for being a part of our podcast family. And now, two guys who are polishing off their resumes to apply to become characters for Disney Parks, Greg the Disney Fanatic and Diz Life Mark. Ahoy hoy everyone and welcome to Ann Company. Welcome to our weekly review of the top headlines from chipandco.com as we dive deeper into the topics that continue to garner your love and attention. Thank you for being part of our show here on the Chip and Company Podcast Network. Please don't forget to subscribe and be part of the fastest growing podcast network in the Disney community where you can now get a daily dose of Disney five days. That's right. Five days a week. Uh, on today's podcast, Mark, here's what we are talking about. A man passing away on the people mover in Walt Disney World and his wife responds. Disney's Blizzard Beach is reopening and people actually cared. Uh, Harmonious goes up in smoke, maybe a little too early. And Disney is in need of cast members. Until they do, we are losing out. I will be bringing the Rushmore of the week, and Mark will hit. Mark has the spicy hot take, and of course, as always, we will spend time trying to figure out where in the world Mr. Chip Confer has disappeared this week. Uh, before we get into the headlines, though, please let me welcome our co-host here of Ann Company and purveyor of Diz Life Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Mr. Mark Valentine. Mark, how are you doing today, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing really, really well, man. It's no, you're been not. A, no, you're not. It's been a great. It's been a great week. No, I actually am. I have something that, like, I can't even talk about happening tomorrow. That is everything, and it's life changing. Tomorrow is going to be the culmination of like my my being. So it is a good week, man. Nothing but positive stuff is happening in the world of Diz Life, Mark. You really are. I And when we can finally speak about this, which yes. will be Saturday, are we allowed to speak about it Saturday? Yeah, when, I'm when, embargoed. When can we, I'm trying uh, not to, I'm going to dance around this. I'm embargoed. Um, yep, I can't even talk you, about it. Right, you are getting to do something that uh, you have wanted to be a part of for a long time, and I'm really happy for you to do this. Uh, speaking of upcoming stuff, man, so you are coming down to Disney next week. I am. Uh, it is. And uh, you are race going week. to run. Yep. So it is the wine and dine half marathon weekend. Uh, so I will be coming down and then the race expo is Thursday, 5k Friday, 10k on Saturday. I am not participating in half marathon uh, because I value my life. And uh, I'm going to be honest, man. I've told this to you. I have a little bit of low key anxiety about the 10k. Uh, I, I've had some injuries that I've had to work through. First, I had some shin splints. Then I had a, uh, a like a ligament and a uh, tendonitis in my shoulder that was like causing lightning like pain throughout the whole right side of my body and my back. So training has been sparse. I'm very nervous about the 10. Very nervous. I think you got it. I, I understand the pains of everyday life, and sometimes they build up over the years. But I think you got it, man. I will be at the at, uh, finish line with confetti cannons for you. Pinkie Hopefully. Pie Cannon. <laughs> let's let's go. All right, man. Let's get into the headlines of the week. Just as a reminder, every week we are talking about on Chip and Company. Uh, we're, or we're talking about on and Company 
the articles that you guys are clicking on. So if you're talking about it, we are talking about it here on this show. Uh, and our first article is uh, is very sad, actually. But uh, a man wound up passing away, and the widow of the 83 year old man who died after riding the Magic Kingdom's People Mover recently spoke out about her husband, the life he lived, how Disney World was his happy place. Uh, but Joseph Masters passed out on Magic Kingdom's People Mover uh, back in September, on September 25th, while he was riding with his wife, Alice. Uh, when the ride came to the end, Disney staff and security responded to the scene where CPR was initiated, according to the sheriff's report, and then he was pronounced dead on arrival uh, at Celebration Hospital. Uh, he was like a little kid in the candy store when visiting Walt Disney World, his wife said to the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, Alice Masters goes on to share, I tell everybody now that my husband died in his happy place because he loved Disney. Uh, Joseph reportedly had pre-existing heart condition and it led to a cardiac event on the people mover. Alice said her husband had a pacemaker since July and she also mentioned how the firefighters and the cast members were wonderful in responding to the medical emergency. Uh, Joseph Masters was a retired Army National Guard veteran, volunteer firefighterman who enjoyed riding motor motorcycles, spending time with his family, and of course, visiting Walt Disney World. Uh, he is survived by his wife, two children, and two granddaughters. Uh, very, very sad. But you know what, man? I mean, there is a poetry to that. Like Alice said, he died in his happy place. She seemed to be very much at peace that her husband kind of went peacefully in, in a place that he loved. I, I have to say, uh, I know this is morbid sounding, but I, and I'm not being disrespectful. Is there a better place if you've lived a wonderful, happy life to pass away at? Like you, if you literally tell are me, doing like, everything again, you've loved doing and that's, and if you lived a wonderful life, there you go. Yeah. I mean, if you were to give me an option of, and say, Mark, like if you could choose a place and a time and a, and a way in which to go, um, sitting next to my wife on probably my favorite ride and my favorite place in the world going quietly, I would, I would take that man. Um, but it's, it's very sad. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not the first time that someone with a pre-existing condition has passed away at one of the parks. Um, but it was, again, I think there's a, there's a degree of, of poetry to Alice kind of providing that commentary and on her husband was very, would have been very happy because it was his favorite place in, in the whole world. But, uh, you know, we do wish our condolences to her and to, uh, his children, as I'm sure that, you know, his passing is, is never easy to deal with the loss of, of a loved one like that. Well but, said. I, I, I have nothing to add, so I will yeah, move on to moving the on to happier. You, yeah, you to truly happier stuff. said it perfectly. So thank you so much for that. Uh, just what you've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. The Blizzard Beach reopening date has uh, been revealed. The <laughs> Blizzard Beach. So hard. <laughs> the Blizzard the Beach. Blizzard beach. The, there are many the. beaches with blizzards, but this is but the. this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, it dude. is a ski rific time at Walt Disney World Resort as Blizzard Beach Water Park prepares to reopen on November 13th when guests will once again set off on an Arctic adventure in the warm Floridian sun and discover new touches from the Walt Disney animation film Frozen, Mark. I, I love this because now it actually makes sense. Go ahead. The new Frozen features will be part of the kid-sized thrills at Tiki's Tyke Tyke Tyke's Peak Tyke's Peak Tyke's Peak. Oh, instead of Pike's, Peak, I get it. Uh, I literally just heard me get something over the air. Greg, That's Greg learned something. He was, young guests. Yeah, he was today years old when he learned that. <laughs> they will delight in the statuettes of Olaf and his Snuggy Snuggy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this article, Mark. You're crushing this um, one. <laughs> it's killing it. Uh, in the warm waiting pool, as why is it warm? Don't Never ask. Mind. You don't want as to know. As well as Anna and Elsa's igloo castle. The water park obviously features heated water throughout the park. Uh, it'll also have an enhanced holiday atmosphere. This year will be limited time holiday offerings through December 31st that include holiday themed treats, snowfall, and festive inner tubes. Guests can even 
me a tropical dressed Santa for the ultimate Florida, Florida holiday experience. Uh, popular attractions obviously are like Summit Plummet, uh, one of the tallest, fastest free fall body slides around. Uh, Team Boat Springs is one of the world's longest group of whitewater raft adventures. Uh, you have the Toboggan Racers, Cross Country Creek, uh, ru- 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 runoff, <laughs> runoff, <laughs> runoff rapids. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> anyway, the food and beverage options options will also be a, a huge draw for guests. Again, the water park offers several spots where guests can chill out and try mouthwater and culinary creations, such as the new frozen themed menu, uh, returning popular options of sweet and savory snacks like the iridescent ice cream cone, 50th ice cream sundae pail, and Walt's chili nachos. Mark, I love water parks, but uh, the festive tubes got me. Um, how smart is it of Disney to finally incorporate Frozen into Blizzard Beach? It just makes sense. Uh, so I'm here for this. Will I go over? I doubt it. <laughs> well, listen, I can tell you that the hot and the cold are po- they're both so intense. Put them together, it just makes sense. <laughs> In summer. In summer. Uh, dude, it makes so much sense to have Frozen take over Blizzard Beach. Blizzard Beach truly makes no sense. It's nonsensical. But having Frozen and a permanent flurry sitting over the, the water park and having a Frozen takeover is a no-brainer and surprised that it didn't happen sooner once they came out with that intellectual property. Have you ever looked into the story behind Blizzard Beach or Typhoon Lagoon? I have. I actually they are have. really like, I can see the Imagineers were sitting around like, okay, we're going to add this and we're going to add this. And here's how the story is going to tie around. And then most people are like, hey, it's a water park. Well, that's kind of what you get. It's just, <laughs> oh, hey, it's a water park. I mean, bo- both water parks have excellent theming and there's there's really cool backstories going into them. But now, uh, I guess I guess this would be another example of the people who are like, oh, yeah, but this is lazy Imagineering. Listen, it's just simplified. You don't have to overthink it now. It's like, why is there snow at Blizzard Beach? Frozen. Oh, <laughs> okay. It makes so much sense now, Mark. It makes now, so Mark. much more sense, yeah. Will so, you be going to a water park? Uh, not a fan soon? of water parks, man. <laughs> not, not a fan. Of and water I parks. will tell you why. <laughs> Do we want to know? I don't like to be barefoot walking around the park. That's truly it. And you could wear they, those water moccasins or whatever, but uh-huh. they're just very un- they're uncomfortable. Crocs. Did you ever think of Crocs? Well, what are you going to do when you go down the slides? You're going to hold them? Uh, or wear them. Can you wear no? Them? Never mind. Because it you say. Can you wear? Crocs I did not. On water I did slides? not They'd think make that you one take through. Them off. I don't know what you would have to do. I think you would still have to walk up the ramps barefoot. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to do it. I have not been there when it's been crowded. I've been there when it's empty. Empty, it's very nice. But still, I there's something. Look, I live down the street from H two O Water Park here in uh, off of one ninety two, right outside of Davenport, and I watch. There is like you have to go up. 10 flights of stairs to get onto one water ride. I don't want to work out yeah. to, and get hot and sweaty. That's a big tip. That's a big cool H2O. Oh, no, for me. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, not no. A, not a fan. Not satisfied with my care. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. So uh, moving on to the Harmonious Barge. <laughs> <laughs> Did, you Did just somebody drop, lose their spot? You, no, you literally dropped the link. I had to click and wait for the link uh, to come up. You did not read the script beforehand. You how, just were like, I'm going to freeform this. Greg wrote it. It should be fine. No, how dare you? How dare uh, how you? Da- <laughs> you know it's me writing. It's not going to make any sense. <laughs> so according to a post on Twitter by user at Tim Beekman, one of the harmonious barges Caught fire over in Epcot. Tim was able to capture the incident on video. Again, that's at Tim underscore Beekman, which is over on Twitter. Uh, The barge itself, uh, if you look, it looks like, according to his post, the fire started after Harmonious ended around 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Guests could see the smoke from the barge all over Epcot. 
Uh, there are multiple angles of the same shot, uh, but the fire started on one of the launch platforms for Harmonious. It was extinguished pretty quickly, according to Disney. Uh, it, this, this is not the first time, though, Greg, that a fire has broken out during Harmonious. Back in September, you may recall, the small fire was started on the roof of the American Pavilion building from the fireworks as well. So um, the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire, Greg. I think once Harmonious learned that it was being um, dismantled and going away for the 100 years of wonder. Yeah, it just blew up. Uh, it was mad. It decided to fight back. Yeah, it said to heck with you. He was like, you know what? I'm going to burn this down. <laughs> it is the Seth Rollins <laughs> of the Epcot. We don't need no water, Greg. Let, <laughs> Let the that Harmonious, uh, burn. Harmonious burn. I Look, and here's the issue. Like people, it was a big fire. Like you here's, could see flames. Well, the, here's like, the isn't issue, that Greg. The, it's pyrotechnics. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> why do they, why do they spray down all of the magic kingdom? Like right before, right before Disney's enchantment. Right, right, right. And here's the issue is they use water the whole time on the barges how does a barge just light up with all the water going on? Like <laughs> something yeah. is weird. I think the Stargate is opening. Um, we just need to dial the right song and the right pattern and out will come the Stargate peoples. Crazy, man. I forgot what their name was. So I just moved on. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, dude, it looks like Disney scaling back character back. meet and greets. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that segue. Cause that works perfectly. Um, yeah, it, this is kind of a double double article because uh, we wrote about this and then we wrote about the follow-up. So I will talk about the follow-up in one second. So Walt Disney World is being impacted by the labor, sh labor shortage due to the pandemic. Those shortages are the cause of mul multiple character meet and greets being scaled back starting – October 23rd, which was three days ago, the following meet and greet will be suspended indefinitely. So no more Donald and Daisy or Max at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Minnie Mouse is no longer at the Magic Kingdom uh, Town Square Theater with Mickey. Uh, and then Minnie Mouse is now gone from International Gateway in Epcot. There may be others that we do not know yet, but we are following up on this. Uh, these character experiences are most likely getting cut to accommodate other character-based experiences such as character meals and shows like Fantasmic. Pete's Silly Sideshow in the Magic Kingdom is still closed as of now with no opening in sight. The returning Disney College program could ease the labor issues in the coming months, but there's no saying when these character meet and greets might return. Um, there is the question of, will you miss these character interactions? But I want to add an update before you answer that, Mark. Um, Disney yesterday they were put on advertisement uh to the, the everybody they I, I don't know how they do it but they do it internally uh looking for cast members to do character auditions so disney is out there doing their job of trying to find cast members who could do auditions and you never know when somebody's going to turn into like man this guy works over here but he'd make a great goofy so Internally, they are looking to replace these characters, and they're looking for more and more employees to do this. I think it's admirable that Disney notices that this is an issue, and they immediately took action to try and find new cast members. But it still stinks for us. We lose out on a meet and greet or two. And that's why you and I are dusting off our resumes to see if we can get hired. So who would you be if you had the opportunity to be uh, face character or what would we call it? A fluffy? <laughs> fluffy? <laughs> but agree with I, a furry character? A furry. A well, furry's a, a I don't want to be a furry, Mark. Yeah, I was going to say, I, there's, I, I didn't use that, that verbiage because there are people who identify as furry. Uh, which is absolutely fine is if fine. they would like to. Yep, absolutely nope. fine. No judgment uh, here. Move, moving on with that. Um, who would I be? Man, of course, I am too tall to be Mickey Mouse. Um, I don't think I could pull off a face character because I would break character way too often. So I had, I would have to be, um, I would have to be one of the visual characters who just moves around a lot. And when you think of that, I would have to be like, uh, uh Tigger. You would be a great Tigger. I think you'd also be a great Goofy. You would probably be the best at Goofy. 
I would have no issues being goofy. I would love that. Well, you have a physicality uh, yeah. about you, and you kind of like. I think the. the the, are you saying I'm goofy? I no, I'm goofy? saying the way that you What are you saying? You are you saying I'm a funny guy? No, that's a compliment. I think you have good, oh. you have excellent movement that I think you would, you would fit naturally into that movement scheme for goofy. I kind of agree with you. Now, uh, let me reverse that on you. Who would you want to play? So I would, I would want to play Donald Duck. Well, here, so truly here's who I'd want to play, but I'm too short. <laughs> I'd be a little short for a stormtrooper, man. <laughs> Yeah. I would love to be no joke. You would, should be that short stormtrooper. I would love to be a stormtrooper, but taking a line from Princess Leia Organa, you're a little short for a stormtrooper. That's who I'd really want to be over in Galaxy's Edge. But I would never, I never fit into the the plate armor. So I think Donald Duck, because most of the, uh, I would be great in a lot of these characters because most of the characters are actually females because they have smaller body types. And since I'm a small dude, I actually would be perfect. Disney, hire you me. Really would be. You would be the best Donald Duck. I could see you doing that. I'm small. <laughs> I am not talking about how small yeah. you are. You are a small guy. Small guy. But I think you would be. You could even probably do Mickey Mouse. So I would. I would love to do any any of those furry characters. Uh, Chip, I would Dale, do anyone, yeah. anyone, any single any one. Single man. one. I but would I'm, really love to be Baymax. Too. My dream, my dream though, would quite obviously be to be a stormtrooper. but I could, I could walk around Hollywood studios all day. You know what they need to hire me as? Not as I need to be, you'd be a good like, Chewbacca. No, I would not be because I, it'd be way too hot in the summer. And I would, I would, <laughs> I would melt. I will. I want them to hire me as like the mayor I just want to walk around and talk to people and tell how wonderful <laughs> things are at Disney. Like imagine me being the mayor of town square. Yeah, so it'd be amazing. I would love that. So anyway, you know, you what? Know what? We, wait, 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 before we go, dude, before we move on chip, who would you be? If you had any character in the world chip, I need to know what character would you want to be? Hey man, where's chip? Uh, Mark, as you've heard, Mark, why did you add this word in here? You know I have problems. <laughs> well, the word is Ockershoes. Ockershoes. Okay. As you've heard, Mark, Ockershoes <laughs> recently reopened at Epcot. Chip and I have talked about the reopening on episode of Di Best of Disney Parks, and we realized that we really need to connect with our cultural hearth of Norway. I can't pronounce any of those words, and Chip <laughs> didn't even attempt to. So instead, Chip has dedicated himself to learning all about the Norse culture by embarking on a modern-day Viking quest. That's right, Mark. Chip boarded an authentic Viking longship and has ventured into the harsh waters of the North Atlantic. He will surely battle sea creatures and the harsh weather along with a way as he writes an epic tale worthy of the annals of Viking lore. He comes from the land of the ice and snow where the midnight sun and the hot springs flow. The hammer, hammer of, of the, the gods. gods will drive his ships to new lands and fight the horde and sing and cry, Valhalla, I am coming. <laughs> Move over, Beowulf and Lear Erickson. Chip the Bjorn as a legend <laughs> to make Mark, you, my friend, are a genius. Thank you for this. That just made my day. Um, to Valhalla, <laughs> Chip must go. Well, they're, yeah, they're, listen, That's an amazing, yeah, Norse, good for Norse him. Word. Good, great for him. I'm glad he understood um, that if, you, if we have offended a culture we will learn about it and chip went right out to learn well his look, I, I did provide you guys with that bit of feedback and i said hey listen you know we really did not do our due diligence on that ocker shoes segment that you guys did on the best of disney parks i mean <laughs> so bad we yeah we we butchered almost all of the pronunciations on all of those words and uh, we heard about it from our norway fans and so i think Good on Chip to do his due diligence and to like become closer with that Norwegian cultural hearth. And I will say for those that listen, thank you so much for uh, opening our eyes to the culture that we come from. <laughs> I absolutely love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, every single week we bring you a random Rushmore on some random Disney topic that we predetermined 
a whole 10 minutes prior to coming on air. Greg is up this week with his random Rushmore. Greg, what are you talking about this week, my friend? Mark, today I was able to get to the parks and buy the new annual pass holders popcorn bucket. And let me tell you what a disappointment it was. I- I'm very upset that we as annual pass holders get gypped while the magic key holders in Disneyland get an amazing Mickey balloon metallic designed popcorn bucket. So today I would like to bring you my Rushmore of Walt Disney World popcorn bucket and sipper designs that are desperately needed. Mark, my list today is going to be of both single designs and will also include sets. Since I consider the Mickey and Minnie 50th anniversary a set, their sipper and popcorn bucket, I will be putting my Rushmore up of both sets and single designs. So let us get right into this, my friends. Number something, the beginning. (laughs) Chip and... (laughs) <laughs> I'm giggly today, man. I'm having a great, amazing day, and this is going to cheer me up. So here is my top Rushmore of popcorn bucket designs that they need. Chip and Dale together as one set. Think of how cute they would look at Christmas time with Chip looking like Chip does, but Dale looking like he was in Pluto's Christmas tree cartoon with the Santa outfit and the candle wick on his head. The candle wick would pop out. It would be the sipper part of it. So Chip and Dale together as a popcorn and sipper set, just like Mickey and Minnie. Uh, My number second one... (laughs) I don't know why I do the that. It just, it's just there, Mark. I Enumeration so, I will, is a problem I will for break, you, Greg. <laughs> yes, I will break that habit at some point. We've done, what, 20 episodes now? Yeah, you would, you would think at this point that we would get the numbering of these down. But no, Correct. Go ahead. Go ahead. Next up on my Rushmore would be of popcorn buckets or sip popcorn and or sipper bucket. Yeah, would be Winnie the Pooh. Need I say anything more? This lovable, silly old bear would be perfect, especially, Mark, if they could figure out how to get his stomach to protrude when filled with popcorn, just like he does after he ate himself full of honey. Number, uh, the next one, my friend. (laughs) The next one. The next one. uh, Of popcorn buckets that are needed here at Walt Disney World, um, better than anything they could have done for the annual pass holders because that was such a disappointment would be sorcerer mickey how awesome would it be to have a sorcerer mickey and his hat pulls off for filling and eating popcorn i can see the design now mickey with the broom in his hand and yen sid's hat on how awesome would that be to have a sorcerer mickey popcorn bucket and finally mark here is my piece de resistance if you will We are still celebrating the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary, and one of the most spectacular things to come out of the 50th anniversary has been the Beacons of Magic, also known as the Park Icons. So, in my opinion, we need an all-four set. Imagine a Spaceship Earth popcorn bucket that lights up, or a Cinderella castle with lights and the song The Magic is Calling playing in the background. The Tree of Life and Hollywood Hotel would both be sippers, but you can agree that having a set of all four popcorn buckets and sippers to celebrate the icons would be something that everybody would be clamoring for. And that, my friend, is my Rushmore of popcorn and sipper designs that need to come to the Walt Disney World Resort. I have nothing bad to say about Either one of those, those options, all of them are magic, just well, pure magic, dude. I appreciate that. It, it was a little disappointing, but I'm not leaving it on the disappointment. I'm saying that those are, those are what is needed at the park. But anyway, this brings us to this week's hot take or spicy hot take, and I am going to give this over and relinquish the floor to Mr. Mark Valentine. Mark, take us away on this week's spicy hot take. Yeah, my apologies in advance, ladies and gentlemen, for this spicy hot take of the week. But there's been something that really has been bothering me. There's a term that has emerged online 
on Disney TikTok specifically. Greg, it has me thinking about this for the last two weeks. I didn't know if I wanted to address it, but I cannot hold my thoughts on this any longer. The term being used is toxic positivity, Greg. This oxymoron has been flung around the Disney community now for a while, and it's become fashionable specifically in the last two weeks. And I wanted to set the record straight here today. But before I do, what is toxic positivity, you might ask? It's when a person or a personality tries their hardest to put a positive and uplifting sentiment, word, or thought out into the world. By trying to remain a force for good and positive, many people have come under fire for this outlook on life and the Disney parks where people are decrying them and calling them liars or Disney shills or even worse, fake. A lot of people have gone further and said that's their on-screen persona and the real side of Disney is much darker. Dude, there's so much that I have to unpack with this and if I really had an opportunity, I mean, like, I could go on and on and on. But let me start with just this part of it. Social media... Greg has given people access in a way never before reached. People are expected to be on stage now at all times. It's almost like we're not allowed to be human beings or to make mistakes. You're not allowed to get mad. You're not allowed to become tired or frustrated or heaven forbid, if we do, we face cancellation. So what people do, they put on a show, they put a smile on for the camera, they sell positive vibes because heaven forbid they showed a minute of humanity like they're like they are normal people, they're going to get raked over the coals. So now, now they're under fire from another group of people that are coming after them for doing the absolute opposite, for being professional, for being positive, for putting out a positive persona by saying that they're fake. So let's correct the record here. They're not being fake. They are not being toxically positive. They're being professional. It's no different than if you're an educator or a teacher who's on stage or in a classroom and you're cultivating a child-friendly persona in front of the kids, or you're a businessman who is conducting himself with decorum in a conference room. Every situation in life requires poise, requires professionalism, requires positivity. However, on-air personages in the Disney community don't get that same deference. They don't get that all of a sudden. If they don't cater to that negative side of Disney creation, well, then you know what? They're liars. Is it possible for these people to just hold strong personal views about pricing, crowds, cuts in amenities, and simultaneously keep a professional and poised demeanor on stage? I would say yes. Just because they're not complaining on air, it doesn't mean that they're fake. They've chosen to allow love and light to dominate their headspace and their branding. They don't have positive views all of the time. They have just chosen to share positive vibes when talking about what they love the most because they love Disney. Now, look, if you want to be negative and you want to be that little storm cloud and the consummate Eeyore in life, that's your prerogative. You as an individual, hey, you are free and entitled to control your own weather patterns. But don't gatekeep another person's choices of what they can and cannot do or what they will or will not allow to affect their mood and their personal headspace. You don't get to arbitrate what is positive or what negative feelings and ideas those people are allowed to have and or communicate online. So to those who are under a fire for maintaining a professional and uplifting attitude, I say to you guys, shine on. Block those people that are going to drag you down, continue to be uniquely you, Disney adults hate it when people gatekeep their happiness. So Disney adults, stop doing the same thing to your own community by telling them what they can and cannot cannot have positive feelings about. There is nothing about being positive that is in any way toxic, Greg. Take that oxymoron and get rid of it from the Disney lexicon. End rant. That is Mark's spicy hot take of the week. Uh, I cannot debate it. I cannot. But I, can I have a conversation with you about it real quick? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to bring up a personal thing here. And uh, we're going to talk about it because this hurt me mentally for many months. I know what you're going to talk about. Do you want me to say it? Because I think it was BS when it happened to you. 
Yes, I and c- without us even talking about this, I know I think, exactly no. where you're going to go. go. go you ahead. just saying that I, I have thoughts about it. You saying exactly what? Just you saying that I know exactly the experience. You had the unique opportunity to be invited onto the Galactic Star Cruiser. And you were legitimately emotional and moved. You are a giant Star Wars fan. You absolutely love Star Wars. And you took to the internet to share your joy and to share how happy you were to be there. And you loved it. You gave it a glowing response. You were living your best Star Wars life in that minute. And you were attacked, literally attacked by one after another person called the Disney shill saying you were in Disney's pocket, that you were in their payroll, that there was no way that you could have a positive outlook or view of this, that it was fake, that you were just like pretending or play acting. That was such garbage because you and I talked offline and it wasn't over an article. It wasn't over media coverage. You legitimately loved it. And you took to, you took to the world to share that joy and you got smacked down for toxic positivity. So you were victimized by it victimized by it. I took a moment that to me, I was very emotional because I was very tired after running through Galactic Star Cruiser for five hours nonstop. And there was a lot of information mentally and physically. So I was tired and I decided to turn the camera around and give people the initial first reaction. And it was beautiful and and it was visceral. Yep. My original reaction was very positive and very glowing because that's how I felt. I didn't mind the people attacking the shill. What I really minded was people attacked me personally and attacked me for having blue hair. Oh, you can't listen to him. He has blue hair. You can't like, listen, I'm an educated human being who has worked very hard to get to this point. I, and along with you, Mark, both of us, have a very positive outlook in life in general. You and I have joked once in a while, oh, you're so New York. But still, you're a very positive person. We love what we do. Love, to the core, love what we do or we would not do this. But I will say, to go back to the Star Wars and that just 60-second video that I put up, I let it stay up there because I still believe in that moment. But I would not do it. I took from February of that of last year all the way up until a few weeks ago to do any face content ever again because, like, even coming out of Guardians, I had I, there was another reaction coming out of Guardians. Disney does stuff that hits you at emotional cores because we're fans of them. And for anybody to backlash because somebody's positive about it or somebody likes it or somebody gets so much enjoyment out of this, who are you to tell me I am not positive or I'm wrong for being positive? We, again, I don't understand. People who are Disney adults hate it when it's gate kept. We, We hate as Disney adults being told what we are allowed to like have that brings us joy. Like we go crazy. It's the only time that we all come together is when someone else outside of Disney is like, oh, they're a Disney adult. And then it's like, listen, why are you going to gatekeep what makes me happy? If you like sports, if you like that, enjoy that. We don't tell you what to like. Don't tell us what to like. But then we turn around and we do it to ourselves. And it's like, no, you can't like that. You're not allowed to like that. We have to just stop gatekeeping our own community Or at the, like, just stop gatekeeping people's positivity and and happiness. And people are allowed to be positive. And when they choose to not broadcast whatever that negative thing is, it's not that they don't have negative views. It's not that they're toxically positive. They just have chosen the weather. They have, they have woken up that day and said, you know what? We need a little, we need a little rain, but I'm not going to get down about it. Yet, like... Did everybody go out and complain about prices increasing? No. Like there are people that were affected by that. No one likes to pay more, but there were a lot of us that were just like, you know what? I still love Disney. I'm not, I'm not going to let it affect my mood today. Stop gatekeeping, gatekeeping what people can and cannot feel. Stop being a gatekeeper when it comes to allowing people to express their joy. It just drives me absolutely insane, man. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the overtime on the hot take, but I know I'm with you and I agree with you. I think that is, uh, it is a hot take. So anyway, well, Mark, anyway, that will do it for another episode of and company. Please check out all the podcasts from this week at chip and company podcast network and stay with us as we may be bringing some, but we've, 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 We've shielded this one for long enough, Mark. Are they, <laughs> they, they should be here in about two weeks. Let's Stop just put it being that way. so toxically positive. 
I am positive that they are coming over. We have a brand new podcast that will be starting over here within the next week or two. So stay tuned for that. We will drop the announcement of who it is and who's coming over because they are amazing. Uh, but as always, Mark, thank you for joining us here at the Chip and Company Podcast we're, we're Network. And as always, my friend, Mark, end of line. I'm positive this podcast is over. Hey guys, Dizlife Mark here, and I want to tell you all about the official travel partner here at Chip and Company. Let our good friend Sarah at Destination to Travel help you plan your next Disney vacation. Sarah specializes in planning dream vacations for your family. She's an authorized Disney vacation planner, and she can help with every step of your magical vacation. The best thing is that her services are 100% free. Want to travel beyond Disney? Sarah has you covered there too. Want to find out more? Fill out a trip request form over at the website at Chip & Co. or email her directly at sarahsolberg at d2travel.com. What are you waiting for? Start planning that dream vacation today. Email her at sarahsolberg at d2travel.com.